The vast silence of the control room at the International Space Monitoring Station was abruptly shattered by a series of rapid beeps from the console. Jack Turner, a seasoned diplomat with a calm demeanor, stood beside Dr. Eli Martin, the chief astronomer, as they stared at the large screen displaying the trajectory of an unidentified object entering the solar system. Is this what I think it is? Jack asked, his voice steady despite the rising tension in the room. Eli nodded, his eyes fixed on the data streaming live. It's not a comet or any known form of space debris. Its path is too controlled. Its artificial has to be. Jack turned to Maria Shen, the operations director, who was coordinating with teams across the globe. Maria, have we notified the UN and the Space Council? Maria, tapping commands into her console, responded without looking up. Yes, Jack. They're convening an emergency session. They want you on the next flight to New York. Jack's phone buzzed urgently. As he stepped aside to take the call, Eli leaned closer to the screen, adjusting the feed to enhance the image of the approaching object. Look at that structure, nothing we've built moves like that, he muttered. The conversation was brief. Jack hung up and turned back to the group. I'm to meet with the Secretary General. They're treating this as a potential first contact scenario. Eli, I need everything we can get on this object composition, trajectory, any emissions. Eli nodded and turned to his colleague, Alice Wright, a biochemist. Alice, start preparing simulations. If this is a ship, we need to understand potential biohazards. Alice, already pulling up relevant protocols on her workstation, acknowledged with a quick, on it. Jack checked his watch and addressed the room. I'm heading to the UN. I want hourly updates. Maria, coordinate eight with Eli and Alice. Make sure we have a constant line open. As Jack gathered his documents, Maria approached him. Jack, are we ready for this? If they are indeed aliens. Jack looked at her, his expression one of controlled concern. We have to be. It's our job to protect Earth, but also to extend the hand of diplomacy. Whatever happens, we approach this as an opportunity for peaceful engagement. Back at his station, Eli was now joined by Dr. Hannah Singh, a theoretical physicist, who had been working on deep space signal patterns. Eli, could the object be sending signals we're not picking up with our standard equipment? She asked. That's a possibility, Hannah. Let's set up a broader spectrum analysis. We can't afford to miss anything. Jack prepared to leave, his mind racing with the potential implications of this discovery. Keep me posted. Every piece of information is crucial. We're stepping into the unknown here, but let's keep our heads and work as a team. Maria gave him a reassuring nod as he left. The room buzzed with a focused energy, everyone keenly aware of the historical significance of their work. As Jack's car sped towards the airport, his thoughts were a mix of apprehension and a determined optimism. Under the surface of professional urgency, there was an unspoken understanding among the team that they were about to embark on a journey that could redefine humanity's place in the cosmos. The road ahead was uncertain but the resolve to meet the unknown with courage and curiosity was clear. Inside the crowded conference room at the United Nations headquarters, Jack Turner stood by a large digital display, along with Dr. Eli Martin and a linguist, Dr. Thomas Reed. So they were preparing to present their initial findings to International Assembly of Diplomats and Scientists. Let's go over the communication protocols one more time, Jack suggested, looking over at Thomas, who was adjusting his glasses nervously. Thomas cleared his throat. Right, based on the data we've collected, their communication doesn't match any terrestrial language, nor does it align with expected mathematical patterning. We're basically trying to decipher a language without a Rosetta Stone. Eli chimed in, his tone analytical. Their ship's emissions suggest advanced technology but no known energy signatures. It's like trying to read a book in the dark. Jack nodded then turned his attention to the room as the Secretary General called the meeting to order. As the murmurs settled, Jack began his presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're facing is unprecedented. The object designated as Visitor 1A is indeed a spacecraft of non-human origin. A ripple of anxious murmurs swept through the room. Jack raised his hand to regain order. Our priority is peaceful engagement. We must understand their intentions and establish a dialogue. Thomas added, I've set up a team to work on the language. We're analyzing patterns, but it's slow going. 
Any cooperative gesture they make needs to be met with caution but also with openness. The Russian delegate, a stern-faced man named Viktor, leaned forward. How do we ensure our security? What if their intentions are hostile? Jack met his gaze firmly. We have protocols for that, Victor. But every action we take must be measured. We cannot afford misunderstandings that could escalate to conflict. The Chinese representative, Dr. Li Wei, raised a point. Have we considered nonverbal communication? Light patterns, sound frequencies, perhaps even gestures? That's an excellent point, Eli responded, tapping on his tablet. Their technology clearly supports varied forms of communication. We should prepare broad-spectrum response tests. Jack agreed Tom Eli work with Dr. Lee on this. Let's think outside the human box. If they can travel through space, they can certainly communicate in ways we haven't yet imagined. As the meeting broke into smaller discussion groups, Jack pulled Thomas and Eli aside. We need to stay ahead of this. Keep the teams focused and innovative. Fear of the unknown can't dictate our actions. Thomas looked thoughtful. There's historical precedence in misunderstood first contacts on Earth leading to disaster. We must tread carefully, learn their language, understand their symbols. Eli added, And I'll coordinate with the tech teams. If they make a move to communicate, we'll be ready to capture and analyze every bit of data. As they dispersed to continue their work, Jack felt the weight of their task. They were not merely diplomats and scientists. They were humanity's first line of interaction with an alien civilization. The potential for a breakthrough was enormous, but so was the risk of a catastrophic blunder. Back at his makeshift office, Jack reviewed the latest data streams. Every piece of information was a piece of a puzzle they were just beginning to understand. He knew the world was watching, waiting for answers he hoped they could provide. In the High Security Communication Lab, Jack Turner, Dr. Eli Martin, and Thomas Reed were joined by a new member, an expert in extraterrestrial technologies, Dr. Aaron Blake. The team was analyzing the latest data transmission from Visitor 1 when a series of low rhythmic pulses began to emanate from the spacecraft. Eli looked over at Aaron, perplexed. Is that a propulsion system adjustment, or are we looking at a communication attempt? Aaron adjusted the frequency filters and analyzed the incoming signals. It's not propulsion, these are deliberate signals. Look at the intervals, they're patterned. Jack leaned closer to the screen, displaying the waveforms. Can we mimic the pattern? Maybe that's what they're waiting for a response in kind. Thomas was tapping away at his keyboard, attempting to synchronize their signal to match the alien's pulses. Okay, let's try sending a mirrored pattern. It's basic, but it might show we're trying to communicate. As the team sent their response, a new, clearer transmission was received. It was a complex blend of sounds and visual patterns which Aaron and Eli immediately set to decipher. That looks more like it, Aaron said, his eyes narrowing as he studied the images. These could be ideogram symbolic rather than phonetic. Thomas nodded. It's like ancient hieroglyphs or cuneiform. Each symbol might represent a concept or an entire word. Jack was observing every interaction, making notes. Keep a record of every transmission. Anything could be the key to understanding their language. Suddenly the screen flashed, displaying a distinct new symbol prominently. It was repeated several times across various contexts. Aaron pointed at the symbol, a sense of urgency in his voice. This symbol keeps coming up. It's different from the others more complex. It might be important, a core part of their message. Eli enhanced the image. Let's focus on this. It could be a starting point to crack their communication code. As the team delved deeper, the meaning of the repeated symbol began to emerge through the pattern analysis. It seems to be associated with danger or a warning, Thomas concluded after cross-referencing the symbol with its context of use. Jack, pondering the implications, proposed a theory. Could they be warning us about something? Or is it a statement about their perception of us? Aaron, always the technologist, suggested a different angle. Or maybe it's a warning to themselves about us. This could be a crucial insight into their thoughts on interspecies interactions. The team mulled over this. If it was a warning, the nature of the warning could redefine the course of their diplomacy. Jack decided to escalate the matter. We need to brief the UN. 
If this is indeed a warning, how we respond could set the tone for all future interactions. As they prepared for the briefing, Eli looked at the symbol again. This might be telling us more about their ethics and approach to the unknown than any direct message could. At the UN meeting, Jack presented the findings, emphasizing the recurring symbol. It appears we are being warned, and we believe this symbol is central to understanding their message. Our response must be one of cautious engagement. The representatives listened intently, aware of the gravity of the situation. The Russian delegate, Victor, leaned forward. This warning, could it not also be a threat? Jack shook his head. It's premature to assume hostility. It could be a cultural imperative to caution when dealing with unknown entities. How we interpret and react to this warning could well determine our future relations with them. The meeting concluded with the assembly agreeing on a careful, measured approach to further communications with Visitor One. The symbol's exact meaning remained unclear, but its importance was undeniable. As Jack and his team returned to the lab, the weight of their responsibility was clearer than ever. Their next steps were critical, not just in decoding a message, but in potentially shaping the future of interstellar diplomacy. In the quiet solitude of the communication lab, late at night, Jack Turner and Dr. Aaron Blake were hunched over various screens displaying the alien symbols they had been tirelessly working to decode. The room was filled with the low hum of computers and the occasional clink of coffee mugs on desks. Jack rubbed his eyes wearily. We're missing something crucial here, Aaron. There has to be a pattern we're not seeing. Aaron, scrolling through lines of data, nodded in agreement. Let's backtrack. Maybe we're assuming too much based on human logic. These beings might conceptualize communication very differently. As they revisited the data, Thomas Reed and Eli Martin joined them, bringing fresh perspectives and much-needed caffeine. See any breakthroughs? Thomas asked, setting down a tray of coffee. Not yet, Jack replied, accepting a cup. We keep hitting the same walls. Aaron suggests we reset our assumptions. Eli took a seat, eyeing the screens. Let's think outside our standard linguistic models. Maybe their language isn't just visual or auditory, but multisensory. Thomas perked up at this. Multisensory, like incorporating environmental or even emotional elements? Aaron considered it. It's possible. Their technology seems capable of manipulating energy in ways we don't understand. Maybe their communication does the same. Inspired by this new angle, Jack suggested, let's pair the symbols with different sensory outputs. See if any broader data patterns emerge when we adjust environmental variables. The team worked into the early hours, modifying their equipment to emit varying light, sound, and even temperature changes in conjunction with the symbols. Slowly, a coherent pattern began to emerge. Look at this. Eli pointed out, excitement evident in his voice as one symbol consistently triggered a mild thermal increase. This symbol could be contextual, dependent on environmental feedback. As they explored further, Jack and Aaron fine-tuned the sensory outputs. The alien symbols started to make more sense within these new parameters, suggesting a complex, nuanced form of communication that integrated multiple senses. Feeling a breakthrough, Jack leaned back, a slow smile forming. We might just be on to something. This could change not just how we talk to them, but how we listen. The night's efforts brought the team closer, not just to decoding the alien message, but to each other. Their collaborative spirit grew stronger, driven by the shared excitement of discovery and the unspoken bond of working through adversity together. As dawn approached, they compiled their findings into a report. We should get some rest, Jack suggested, his voice hoarse from hours of discussion. We'll need to be sharp to present this. It's going to raise quite a few eyebrows. Aaron stretched, a look of weary satisfaction on his face. Yeah, we'll need all the energy we can get. The implications of this are huge. Thomas gathered his notes, grinning at the team. We're making history here, guys. Let's keep up the momentum. Eli, ever the reflective one, added, This isn't just about making history. It's about building a future. With their groundbreaking findings in tow, the team left the lab, the morning light casting long shadows behind them as they walked together, ready for the challenges of the new day. Their camaraderie had turned them into more than colleagues, they were comrades in arms, united by their quest for understanding in the vast unknown of interstellar communication. Back at the United Nations, 
The atmosphere was charged with a mix of excitement and apprehension. Jack Turner, together with Dr. Aaron Blake and Thomas Reed, walked briskly toward the main conference hall, their latest findings on alien communication in hand. They were joined by a new expert, Dr. Simon Cortez, a sociologist specializing in interspecies ethics. As they prepared their presentation, Jack briefed the team. This information could fundamentally change our approach. But remember, it's not just about the data. We need to consider the broader implications of our interaction. Simon nodded thoughtfully. Absolutely, Jack. Understanding their communication is one thing, but understanding their culture and a per se of us or expect to be perceived is equally critical. Aaron chimed in, adjusting his glasses. I've tweaked the environmental sensors based on our last session. We should be able to demonstrate live how the communication changes with different stimuli. As they set up in the conference hall, a cluster of diplomats and scientists from various countries filled the room, murmuring in anticipation. Thomas tested the microphone, then turned to Jack. Everything's ready. It's showtime. Jack stepped up to the podium, cleared his throat, and began. Ladies and gentlemen, today we share a significant breakthrough in our efforts to communicate with our visitors. What we have discovered is not just a way to translate their language, but to interact with it on a multisensory level. The audience listened intently as Aaron projected the alien symbols on the screen, demonstrating the changes as they adjusted the lights and temperature of the room. The symbols shifted, aligning with the new environmental settings, illustrating their hypothesis. A French delegate raised a hand. Dr. Turner, are you suggesting that their form of communication can adapt to environmental conditions? Yes, Jack confirmed. Their language appears to be highly adaptive, possibly as a way to convey more nuanced information. I, Simon, took over, addressing the cultural implications. This adaptability suggests a highly contextual culture where meaning can shift with circumstances. It's a form of resilience and a deep integration with their environment. An Indian scientist interjected, could this mean that their messages to us have been context-dependent, that we might have misread intentions based on our own environmental biases? Exactly, Thomas added. This is why our approach must be one of flexibility and openness to context. We need to avoid projecting our interpretations without understanding their environmental cues. The room buzzed with questions and speculations. Jack fielded them with the help of his team, explaining the technical details and seeing a sensitivity in further communications. As the meeting drew to a close, a Russian general spoke up, his tone skeptical. This is all well and good for diplomacy, but how do we ensure our security? If their communication is this complex, could we not miss a warning? Jack responded calmly, General, that's a valid concern. That's why our team is working not just to understand their language, but to understand all possible contexts. Security isn't just about preparing for threats, but also about preventing misunderstandings that could lead to conflict. The general nodded, albeit reluctantly, and the crowd began to disperse, conversations continuing in smaller groups. Jack turned to his team, a tired smile on his face. Good work today. Let's keep pushing, stay curious, and stay open. We're not just decoding signals. We're learning how to coexist. As they packed up their equipment, the challenges of interspecies communication loomed large, but so did the possibilities. Each breakthrough brought them closer to a true dialogue, one that could someday bridge the vast expanse between stars. In the following weeks, the interactions between the humans and their alien visitors intensified. Dr. Aaron Blake and Jack Turner had been invited aboard the alien vessel, a gesture that signaled a new level of trust and cooperation. Along with them was Dr. Simon Cortez, whose expertise in cultural exchanges was proving invaluable. As they prepared to board the alien craft, the atmosphere among the team was a blend of excitement and solemnity. This is a momentous step, Simon remarked, checking his digital recorder and other instruments. Today, we're not just scientists and diplomats, we're ambassadors in the truest sense. Jack adjusted his communication device. Let's keep our objectives clear. We observe, we learn, and most importantly, we share our findings transparently. Aaron, always focused on the technical aspects, added, 
and I've set up our translators with the latest updates from the communication patterns we decoded. It should help facilitate a more fluid exchange. So once aboard, they were greeted by the alien delegation. The environment was starkly different from Earth, with ambient lights that shifted colors subtly, which the team knew to represent different communication states. The lead alien, whom they had started to refer to as Mira, gestured them forward. Its movements were graceful, almost choreographed, an integral part of their communication. Jack took the lead. Mira, thank you for inviting us. We come with the desire to understand and share. Sumira responded, the translator device buzzing slightly as it converted her tones and lights into English. So we welcome you. Understanding is the foundation of coexistence. The team was then shown around the vessel. Aaron was particularly fascinated by the technology integration. The way your systems are integrated is remarkable. It seems your technology and communication are almost indistinguishable from each other. Mira nodded, her body illuminating with a warm amber light which the device interpreted as agreement. Our technology is an extension of ourselves. It grows and adapts with us. Simon, observing everything closely, noted, Your society seems to have a very holistic view of technology. It's not separate, but a part of your living culture. As they moved through different sections of the ship, Jack asked about their governance and social structures. Mira's explanations, conveyed through complex light patterns, revealed a society where decisions were made through consensus and communicated across the populace instantaneously. What can you tell us about your views on humans? Jack inquired, aware of the delicacy of the question. Shumira paused, her lights dimming to a soft blue. Humans are curious, creative, yet unpredictable. It is both intriguing and concerning. Aaron recorded the light patterns, while Simon mused. That's not an uncommon view in first contacts. It's often the unknown elements that define initial relations. Their final stop was a chamber that Mira described as a place of contemplation where decisions of great import were made. Here we reflect on potential paths. We invite you to share in this. Jack was honored. We appreciate your openness. We hope that our actions reflect our intentions and that our own unpredictability can be seen as a strength of drive to explore and understand. As they left the ship, the team felt a renewed sense of purpose. The dialogue had not only opened up new avenues of understanding, but also highlighted the commonalities in their fundamental desires for peace and understanding. Back on Earth, the debriefing was intense. The team shared their insights with global leaders, emphasizing the potential for a partnership based on respect and shared knowledge. This is just the beginning, Jack concluded in the meeting. But it's a promising one. Our approach must be thoughtful and driven by the pursuit of understanding. Let's proceed with the curiosity that defines us, but also the caution that this opportunity deserves. The growing relationship between humans and the alien visitors faced its first significant test when a misinterpretation of data led to a brief but intense period of tension. The alien craft had moved closer to Earth, a maneuver that was intended as a goodwill gesture, but was perceived by some military factions as a potential threat. In the Situation Room, Jack Turner, Dr. Aaron Blake, and a newly involved military liaison, Colonel Richard Mason, were in an emergency meeting with the UN Security Council. Colonel Mason was the first to speak, his tone firm. The craft's sudden change in position has alarmed several member states, so we need clarification, and we need it fast. Jack nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. We're in touch with the aliens. Their movements were meant to be a sign of trust, bringing them closer to us for better communication. There was no hostile intent. Aaron added, I've been monitoring all their transmissions. There's been no indication of aggression. This is consistent with everything we've learned about their culture. It's imperative we communicate this to all parties, Jack stressed. A misstep here could set back our relations by decades. Colonel Mason agreed, though his concern was palpable. I'll coordinate with our defense units. We'll maintain a defensive posture until we can confirm this with absolute certainty. Jack's phone buzzed an incoming message from Mira, the alien leader. He read it aloud. Our movement towards your planet is a step closer to understanding, not a prelude to conflict. They're reiterating their peaceful intent. With this confirmation, Colonel Mason relaxed slightly. I'll pass this along but we should set up a direct line of communication, something that doesn't rely on intermediaries. 
An excellent idea, Aaron said. I'll work on enhancing our translation devices to facilitate real-time communication. The following days were a whirlwind of diplomacy, as Jack and his team worked tirelessly to facilitate understanding between Earth's governments and the aliens. Meetings were held around the clock, with Aaron improving communication technology and Jack spearheading the negotiations. In a significant session with Earth's leaders, Jack explained the situation. Their culture is highly integrative. They use technology to enhance their empathetic connections, not to wage war. Their approach to us is based on a desire for peaceful coexistence. Simon Cortez, who had been working on a cultural exchange program, added, We have a unique opportunity to learn from them to gain insights into not only advanced technology but also a way of life that emphasizes harmony and connectivity. Colonel Mason, now a strong advocate for the diplomatic approach, shared his change of perspective. We've seen enough conflict. It's time we take a chance on peace. With the right safeguards, of course. The climax of these efforts was a global broadcast where Mira addressed humanity through a translation device perfected by Aaron. Her message was clear and resonated worldwide. We come to you not as conquerors, but as potential partners. The cosmos is vast, and together, we can explore it in peace. The broadcast was a turning point. Public opinion shifted, and the fear of the unknown gradually gave way to curiosity and a cautious optimism. Jack, reflecting on the past week's whirlwind of activities, felt a profound sense of accomplishment. We've navigated through one of the trickiest situations imaginable. It's a testament to what we can achieve when we choose dialogue over conflict. The team's efforts culminated in the establishment of an Earth Alien Liaison Office, with Jack and Mira as co-chairs. This new body was tasked with overseeing all interactions and ensuring that the partnership remained on a stable and productive path. As they adjourned the final meeting, Jack turned to his team. Thanks to your hard work, we've not just averted a crisis but laid the groundwork for a future that, just months ago, would have been considered science fiction. Together, they had steered humanity to a new dawn and era of interspecies communication and mutual respect, founded on the understanding that shared knowledge and cooperative exploration were the truest forms of strength. As the Earth settled into a new rhythm of coexistence with the alien visitors, Jack Turner and his team prepared for the inaugural assembly at the newly established Earth Alien Liaison Office. The office, a sleek, modern building designed to accommodate human and alien needs, was bustling with activity. Jack walked alongside Dr. Aaron Blake and Colonel Richard Mason as they discussed the day's agenda. This first meeting isn't just ceremonial, Jack noted. It sets the tone for everything that follows. We need to be clear about our goals and transparent in our methods. Colonel Mason, now fully on board with the diplomatic path, nodded in agreement. Security is tight, but unobtrusive. We want them to feel welcomed, not watched. Aaron, checking his tablet for the last minute dates on the communication systems, added, The real-time translators are ready. We've come a long way from those first awkward exchanges. The trio entered the main conference room where human and alien delegates were mingling, a scene once unimaginable. Jack greeted Mira warmly, her light patterns pulsing in what Jack had learned to recognize as a sign of pleasure. Jack, this place is a symbol of what we aspire to achieve, Mira communicated through the translator, her tones melodic and harmonious. It's a new era for all of us, Jack replied, his voice reflecting his profound respect for the path they had chosen. As the assembly took their seats, Dr. Simon Cortez took the stage to discuss the cultural exchange programs. We are about to embark on shared educational initiatives that will allow our young people to learn from each other's worlds, Simon explained. Imagine the possibilities when our youth grow up understanding not just one, but two worlds. The audience, a blend of various species, nodded and murmured their approval. The idea of interstellar education was met with enthusiasm and curiosity. Jack then introduced a panel discussion on technological collaboration. Aaron led this segment, outlining the upcoming joint projects, including environmental sustainability efforts. By combining our technologies, we can address some of the most pressing challenges of our times, Aaron proposed. Climate change, energy consumption, and resource management can all benefit from our cooperative research. Mira followed, detailing how their technology could assist in healing Earth's ecosystems. 
Our ability to integrate biological and technological systems can offer new ways to restore your planet's balance. As the meeting progressed, the floor opened for questions. A young scientist from Earth asked, How will we handle disagreement that might arise in our joint projects? Jack responded thoughtfully, Like any partnership, there will be challenges, but we've established protocols to address disputes through dialogue and mutual understanding. It's about finding common ground and respecting each other's perspectives. The assembly concluded with a tour of the facility, including the communication center, where Earth and alien technology interfaced seamlessly. The delegates were impressed with the setup, designed to foster not just cooperation but a deep, ongoing dialogue. As the delegates dispersed, Jack, Aaron, and Colonel Mason stood back, observing the interactions. What we've started here, Jack said, turning to his colleagues, is more than just diplomacy. It's a bridge between worlds. Aaron smiled, looking over the bustling room. It's amazing to see how far we've come from that first uncertain contact to a collaborative future. Colonel Mason, who had witnessed the entire transition from suspicion to partnership, summed up the sentiment. It's a new world, gentlemen, and we're the ones lucky enough to usher it in. With the successful launch of the liaison office, humanity and the aliens were no longer just visitors on each other's worlds, but partners in the truest sense, ready to face the complexities of the universe together. The era of shared knowledge and exploration had begun, promising a future limited only by the stars themselves.